Hi everyone, so today's video is going to cover writing tips for pantsers. So if you didn't know, I've been a pantser for as long as I've been writing, so for about eight years now, and I thought it'd be fun to make a video for fellow pantsers out there. So before we get into it, if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say pantser, I'm referring to a type of writer. So there are two major types of writers, outliners and pantsers, and sometimes people identify in the middle. So we have pantsers, planters, and then outliners. A pantser is essentially somebody who writes their story from the seat of their own pants, whereas an outliner plans their story before they write it. So now that that's covered, let's dive right into the tips. My first tip for pantsers is to find the bad bulb. A strength I feel pantsing gives me is that I have increased intuition as I write. This can mean I'm hyper aware of images, character emotions, or even senses just through a gut reaction alone. And that's why I like pantsing. It allows me to write quite viscerally. However, picture this. I'm in the middle of writing a scene and slowly become more and more aware that something is just not right. The problem is I have no idea what's wrong with what I'm writing. In this instance, my pantsers intuition has informed me that there's a problem with what I'm writing. Or is there? A common issue I have as a panzer is not knowing what caused an issue in my story. Sometimes I'll spend days revising a scene only to realize weeks later that the scene wasn't the issue, but something larger was. So if you're a panzer and get stuck on a scene, I find it's helpful to investigate and find the bad bulb. So what is a bad bulb? Bad bulb is a term that I canoned because I thought it was an interesting analogy. A bad bulb is a moment in your story that that covertly affects the scenes that come after it. So I've coined the term bad bulb, not because the writing is bad or the scene itself is bad, but because much like a bad bulb on a line of Christmas lights that affects the entire string, your story's bad bulb affects your entire story from that point on. And it also might be difficult to spot at first. So what's the solution when this happens to you? I saw a tip on Tumblr years ago and I've been unable to find it since then. So if anybody can find the proper credit, let me know. I looked for it, I couldn't find it, but it's one of those pieces of writing advice that has stuck with me for years. And it's essentially that if you get stuck on a scene, look back at the scenes or previous chapters that came before your current problem scene. Nine times out of 10, I noticed that there was an issue with the earlier scenes, whether that was poor causality or a rush in pacing, a lack of characterization, a forgotten detail. And once I resolve that issue earlier in this story, that allows me to fix my current issue. I find that with a lot of fiction, especially in my experience, that folks may not even realize that a large issue in your novel or your story might actually be because of one thing that came before that needs tweaking. So for example, in a novel opening that I workshopped, I'd felt that the ending was kind of rushed. It felt a little bit melodramatic. And in the workshop, we discussed elongating the time the characters spent in their ordinary world. And I realized that the characters had literally rushed out of their ordinary world way too soon. I could have spent weeks tweaking on the line level to make the ending feel like it was better paste, but that wouldn't have fixed the bad bulb, which was that the events at the end of the chapter needed to come much later in the book. So my second tip for pantsers is to remember that choices create events. As a pantser, it can be overwhelming to get to the end of a document and have no idea what else to write. In these moments, I like to remind myself that the choices my characters make primarily create the events in the book. I find it personally very difficult to come up with brand new events to occur in my book or story on the spot. So instead, I like to think back to the last scene that I wrote and ask myself, what inevitable choice does my character make or is forced to make because of that previous scene? Essentially, how does A lead to B lead to C? But what is a causal chain? A causal chain is a series of events that determine the others to occur. So everything that occurs in your story is predetermined by what happened before. For me, it's easier to create a causal chain when I think about how my character's choice inevitably leads them to a next choice and then a next choice and a next choice and so on rather than focusing on which event leads to the next event. But just as character choices create events and stories, a pantser may be faced with several choices of what to write next in their story. Sometimes I can't tell what to write next because I have so many options. So in that instance, that leads me to my next tip for panthers, and that is don't be afraid to experiment. The hard reality for panzers is that sometimes it takes a few tries to land on a scene or a plot thread that sticks. Experimentation essentially is your friend. If I end up writing a scene that I don't feel is working out, I never delete it. I always have a document, a separate document for each project.
project or I can paste all the cutout scenes, cutout lines from that particular project. And I can always refer to those later. Sometimes they even use those paragraphs, those scenes or lines later in the project. As a pantser, in my experience, I always have at minimum 10,000 words of cut out work that never made the final book. Sometimes that number is much higher. My highest amount of cutout words in a book was 60,000 words, and that was for like a 77,000 word manuscript. So I cut out the equivalent of a novel length to end up creating the 77,000 word manuscript. I'm personally okay with that, or I've had to learn to be okay with having a whole bunch of words that don't end up making the cut because pantsing offers me other benefits, but I've saved a lot of heartache, accepting that sometimes my writing will go to waste rather than trying to force a scene into a story that doesn't need it. And I mean, at the end of the day, no writing is wasted writing. Anytime you're writing, you're progressing in some sort of way. So even though it does kind of suck, sometimes I just have to learn to rip the bandaid off and get rid of the scene, the paragraph or whatever idea it is so that I can progress in the story. So my next tip for pantsers is to make the process more efficient for you. So you're a pantser, which means you can do whatever you want, which is a huge plus. I love discovering my stories as I write it. There's a certain level of thrill to that experience that I really love. Though a drawback to pantsing is sometimes having to deal with writer's block, forgetfulness, inconsistent characters, and so on. This is where I recommend hacking your pantsing process to make it more efficient for you. Trust me, <laughs> these are things that I always wish I had done when I finish a book or I need to revise a book, things that I myself should implement more often. Rather than scrambling to recall information that I wrote into a manuscript years and years ago. So the first idea on how to hack your process is is to timeline. So as you write, make a note of your story's timeline. I like to do this in a literal calendar since it's easier for me to understand how time progresses like on a physical sheet of paper, but you can also just make notes. I would make note of when scenes occur, but especially of major passages of time. So for my novels, like I mentioned, I like to do this in a literal calendar and I make note of when each scene occurs and if some occur even on the same day. Every time I don't do this, I lose track of the timeline and I have no idea. I currently did not do this for the fantasy novel that I'm writing and I regret it. So the next idea to hack your process is to keep track of important information. I find it helpful to make a visual change in my document each time there's important exposition given in the text. And I usually do this by bolding the words since that's quite easy to see when I zoom out on my document. But you can also leave a symbol like a pound sign or an asterisk so you can easily do a search in your document when you're looking for this important information. You can also highlight the information or paste it into a separate document. I do this with my fantasy book, Seven Virtue, which requires constant world building that I'm not very good at because this is my first time trying this genre. And I do that just in case I need a reminder for how my world works because I forget very easily. <laughs> so my next idea to hack your process is to note major changes. So similarly, in a separate document, note major changes to your book, whether that's to a character, or a scene, or a plot. I also recommend noting the page number and the chapter number, and also even leaving a short explanation, like one to two sentences of why you made that change. I just find this particularly important, especially if I've made major changes to a scene's location or realized a character is no longer a villain, which happens a lot more than you'd think when I'm writing. Especially if you are a busy writer who doesn't write super frequently. I'm a full-time student, so I don't write my novels for eight months of the year. That means I forget a lot of information. So noting major changes is really helpful so that you can keep quite consistent. So the next tip to hack your process is to reread your work before each writing session. So I often need a refresher of what I previously wrote. So I like to take five to 10 minutes at the start of of my writing sessions to reread the last couple of scenes that I wrote. Sometimes I'll even reread a full chapter. I find that when I don't do this, I create some sort of like major inconsistency in the book that I then have to make larger changes later on in revisions to fix. So I make it a bit of a ritual or a habit to frequently reread my work, especially as a pantser. If I don't have all of this information already mapped out, I might forget it. So my last idea to hack your pantsing process is to reverse 
outline. So as a pantser, I can't stress the importance enough of reverse outlining. So this means to write a one to two sentence summary of each scene or even each chapter after they've all been written. I like to do this after every chapter. I'm not saying that I stay consistent with it. Usually I do the first six chapters of the book and then I fall off and regret that I didn't do it. So I recommend staying consistent so that you don't do what I do and then have to take like two, three hours re-outlining the whole book after you've forgotten the whole thing and just do it right after you finish the chapter or even after each scene. So this is a quicker way of reminding yourself what happened in your book instead of having to reread thousands of words. It might also help emphasize holes in your story that need filling or scenes that are repeating themselves over and over again. I do that all the time. I constantly repeat scenes when I don't remind myself of what I previously wrote and I would prefer not to do that. We're trying to get efficient. So my next tip for pantsers is to learn when you write best. So pantsers must rely on their constant imagination. And that's because you don't have a plan laid out for you. You're creating it as you're writing it, which means your imagination is constantly working. It wasn't working prior when you were planning the scene because you don't plan. So I find it's extremely important to understand when my own creativity is at its highest what makes my creativity tick? Usually I like to write in the evening or later night and not during the day because my brain is a little less sharp. It's a little less anxious toward the end of the night because I've settled into my day. I'm also more imaginative after watching some TV or rereading something that I really like. So if you're like me, engage in content that gets your imaginative muscles going. If you have a playlist for your book and you really feel inspired by music, perhaps listen to a couple of minutes of your playlist. Add to your Pinterest board, make a mood board. But as a panther, it's critical that you understand what makes your creativity blossom in order to make the process sustainable for you. So I've been a pantser for nearly 10 years now and what has made me consistently stick with it is knowing that I need to write at certain times and when I'm in a certain mindset. And that also means that I know to avoid writing when I'm upset, for example, or too tired or even feeling a little bit unprepared. Pantsing is a ton of labor and that's not to say that outlining isn't either, but with pantsing, you're ideating and writing at the same time. You're not necessarily doing that when you have an outline because the ideas are already listed out for you. You have a roadmap. With pantsing, you're driving with no idea where you're going. So I like to take some time to understand what works best for me so I have the highest chance of success. So I recommend thinking of the last couple of writing sessions that were particularly successful for you and noting what made them successful for you versus previous sessions that weren't as successful. Whether or not a writing session works out for me is whether or not I enter the flow state. Usually I enter the flow state when I have increased time, a lot of silence, or a stretch of solitude, like if I'm in a car for a long time. So my final tip for pantsers is to follow the images. So I find that it's sometimes hard to keep writing when I don't have every plot element figured out just yet. So if you find you're incredibly stuck, stepping back and writing an image you can actually see instead of the one you think you need to see can be helpful in keeping up momentum instead of completely shutting down your process. Sometimes I know I need to write XYZ Scene, but I just don't see that scene materializing in my mind where I might be able to quite vividly see an image or a scene that takes me somewhere else. I like to follow these impulsive images, these impulsive changes because they're like little notes from my subconscious. In general, this is a really great exercise if you're stuck with what to write. So can you see a character in a setting? What are they wearing? Are they holding something? Are they doing something? And what's the time of day? What's the weather like? These are questions you can ask yourself. And if you see any image that sticks out to you, follow it. So I was talking to my sister about this tip yesterday and the example that I gave to her was sometimes if I know I need to write a scene that occurs in a forest, I might not know where to start with that. But if I just close my eyes and I can see my character washing their hands in a stream that's flowing through the trees, I can start with that image instead of starting again with the idea of the event. This ties back into what I was saying earlier with choices rather than events. So I like to think of it as images rather than a summary of what you know needs to happen. So instead of right character walking through a forest, I like to think of it as my character looks at their hands as they wash it in a stream that's flowing through a forest. I think this is one of the game changers of pantsing that made me really understand my process a little bit more. Leaning into the visualization 
action can yield powerful results because you're focusing on the story as if it's a movie unfolding in front of you instead of like a list of instructions that you need to complete. So those are all my tips for pantsers. If you're a pantser, let me know your best kept secret in the comments below. And if you're not a pantser and you're an outliner, would you try any of the tips that I noted in this video? For now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another one. Bye.